Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today we're going to cover setting up the S6R with the RadioMaster TX16S. Hey, before I get into the content, I just want to remind you, if you're a regular visitor of the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. It definitely helps the channel grow. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're told when new material hits the channel. Also, hit up my t-shirt store and check out my Amazon affiliate links. All right, I want to wrap some fences around what I'm going to cover in this video because there is so much material on these stabilized receivers that it would be really easy to get out of scope and have a video that's very, very long and I want to avoid doing that. So what I'm going to be doing today is showing you how to set up an S6R receiver from out of the box where you have to bind it to your radio, configure the radio, go into the Lua script on the radio and configure the stabilizer, do the calibrations and test. We're also, I'm going to constrain this to quick mode. There's a non-quick mode which lets you do things like use the gyro to put the airplane in a knife edge or a hover Number one, I've never tried it, so I'm not, I have no flight experience doing it. And number two, I just kind of have this idea that that's cheating. <laughs> so if you're going to do a knife edge, do a knife edge. If you're going to hover, hover. So this is just quick mode. And in quick mode, you're going to wind up with three different stabilization options. One is no stabilization at all. Two is wind rejection. And three is auto level or panic mode, the chicken switch, I call it. In order to completely configure the SXR receivers with the TX16S radio, there are five things we need to accomplish. First, we've got to bind the receiver to the radio. Then we've got to calibrate the receiver. Then we have to set up our radio so it can interact correctly with the receiver and tell the receiver what to do. Then we need to set up the receiver configuration itself so the receiver understands what modes it uses and what gains to use and, and how to control the aircraft. And then the fifth step is to initiate what's called a self-check which explains to the receiver what level is inside the plane and the distance for our throws and what center looks like for this radio. So let's get started by completing the bind procedure. With the radio powered up, press the FS button on the receiver and I'm going to connect power. And you'll see that that puts it into a green solid mode. Now when I go into the model setup, We'll go down to the bottom where the receiver is and make sure to use for the TX-16, the multi-module FR Sky with D-16 mode. I assigned a receiver number 63. You do want to make sure you use unique receiver IDs for each of your receivers in the radio. That helps avoid confusion from model to model. And now finally I'll hit the bind switch. It'll ask me about telemetry. I'll select yes and we should see a bind on the receiver. So here we go. Here's the bind. I want channels 1 through 8 with telemetry on. And you can see on the receiver we've got a blinking red light. That indicates we've got our complete bind. Okay, now we'll disconnect the receiver, exit bind mode from the radio, plug the receiver back in, connect a servo to make sure that we actually have control. And there we go, I've got movement on my servo. So that receiver is definitely bound to this radio. Okay, the next step is to perform a calibration. Click on the SD card structure. I'm going to go down here to SXR. I'm going to click that and you see how I've got SXR calibrate. That's the one I'm interested in. Long press on calibrate, I get an option to execute the script. We'll do that. And now the radio will guide me through the configuration. And I know that the radio is talking to the receiver because I can see variation on the X, Y, and Z axes. So I know that they are communicating. Okay, so I've got the receiver flat on my work surface with my pins facing aft. I'm going to press enter. You'll see the green light flash and you should see a yellow in there. There we go. It accepted at that time. Now I'll place the SXR in the following position. We'll rotate it over. Pin still facing aft. It's flat on my work surface. I hit enter. If it doesn't take, sometimes you have to hit it again. I'm not sure why, but there we go. It took that time. Now it wants to be up on the end with the antenna, so I've got to use a little stand here to help me get it off the ground because I don't want to pinch up my antennas and I want it flat. Okay, 
So here we go. I got my R is up. Okay, now flip it over. So the S is up. And then down on its side, I can get rid of my stand now. You notice I'm holding it flat. We don't want any movement and you want it flat. That's the key. All right, now flip it over on the back side so it's upside down. Didn't seem to take that time, so I'm going to hit it again. And there we go, calibration complete. Press return when ready. Okay, on to step number three. Let's configure the radio. The third step is to configure the radio. And as you can see on channels one, two, three, and four, I've got ailerons, elevator, throttle, and rudder. I'm not going to cover that in this, in this video. I've already gone over plane setup, so we're going to skip right over that. And we're going to go down into the things that are S6R or S8R specific. So the first thing you'll notice is on channel nine. This is a key channel. This one lets you put a gain option on your radio so that while you're flying, you can adjust the gains. I cannot stress enough how important this is because if you don't have this capability, then you have to constantly land the plane and change the receiver and then take off and fly and then land and change the receiver and then take off and fly. And those parameters may change depending on conditions. If you have a very windy day, you might need a little bit more of an aggressive gain. If you have a very calm day, you might not need any gain at all. Uh, you, might not, you might need very little gain for, say, auto level. So to me, having gain on the radio is a super important feature. So I'm gonna go into channel nine and show you how, how to set this up. There are really two ways to do it. I usually do it via curve, but you can also do it with weights and offset. For channel nine, I've gone in and set the mix name to gain. So that's, that's channel nine with an S6R, S8R. And for the source, I assigned my second potentiometer, that's S2. And then I set the weight to 50% and the offset to 50%. It doesn't need to be trimmable. This is not one that needs to be trimmable. So you could click that off if you want to. So now with that set, watch the output meter down here on the bottom under channel nine. And I'll zoom out so you can see the movement of the potentiometer. Okay, so here's S2 up on the top right. Now watch the output for S9. You see how it's increasing from zero to 100? That's why you do the weight of 50 and the offset of 50 because you don't want a negative value for gain. And if you did, what would wind up happening is your gain would not take effect until you hit the 50% mark on the pot. So you don't have to do it this way, but it becomes to me non-intuitive. By setting it to 50-50, you take advantage of the full sweep of the knob. If you don't set it to 50-50, then you wind up only using gain for half the knob. So it would, it would only take effect when you hit the 50% mark. There's another way to do it, and I'll show you that real quick. If you're into curves, you can go in here under weight and set the weight to 100. Turn the offset back down to zero. And then under custom, you can go in and set a curve. I have my curve named gain. And I'll show you what, the, what that looks like. But you get the same result. If you look at channel 9 here, I'll spin the knob. You see how I'm going up from 0? It, it turns out to do the same thing. So either way works. Whatever, it's whatever makes you happy. But I'll show you what the curve looks like. There's my gain curve. And I have it set at 0 on the left and 100 on the right. And by the way, this could be a two-point curve as well. This does not need to be a five-point curve. That, a two-point curve will work perfectly for that. So you go back into the mix and look under channel nine, and you can see this output monitor right here. That's using a gain. Either way, it doesn't matter whatever floats your boat. If you're using curves anyway, like say for flaps, you can use the same curve for different things. So you could use a curve for flaps, you could use it for gain, um, you could use it for whatever you want. All right, so that's the gain. And remember, this is the master gain. And I, when I get down to the gain section, when we configure the S6R, I'll talk to you about how the gain behaves differently depending on the mode you're in, because there are different behaviors. Okay, the next channel that we have to configure is channel 10, and that is the mode switch. So for me, I like to use SC as my mode switch. And all you do is put in a switch at 100% with no modifiers at all, and I call it mode. So I'll show you what that looks like in the mixer itself. 
I gave the mix name mode. Okay, here's a little pro tip for you. When you decide what source you want to use, and this works on a bunch of different fields on OpenTX, you don't have to sit and use the knob to find the switch you're looking for. You can just simply grab the switch and toggle it. And when you do, you notice that that source has changed automatically to that switch. So that's it, no offsets. This doesn't need to be trimmable. You take that off and that's it. It's just a very basic, very basic mixer for switch channel 10. All right, and then the last one we have to configure is the auto check or calibration switch or whatever they call it. To me, I consider it a calibration switch because it, what it does is it lets you configure or calibrate the receiver in the plane. Now, before I go any further, I also want to point out that if you use this while you're flying, your plane's going to crash. I'm not going to cover it in today's video, but it'd probably be very wise to create some kind of logical switch that would block the use of this SA switch while you're flying. So, so for example, maybe the switch is only active if your throttle cut is, is engaged. That would be a good way to put a safety in place so that you can't crash the plane. And what will happen is if you click this switch three times, the receiver is going to stop listening to the ground controls. It's going to calibrate itself while it's in the air, which is bad. And then it's going to slam the, the surfaces a couple of different times. It's going to do a servo dance. And then, of course, that's going to turn your plane into a pile of toothpicks. So you really want to be careful not to use that switch while you're flying. But it's important to use it in setting up the radio. So just like channel 10, it's real simple. You go in here and set a switch. I use SA for mine and you put it at 100%, it does not need to be trimmable, and you can give it a name, um, you can call it CAL, we'll call it calibration, CAL. Okay, so calibration. That's it, that, that's all you need to do on the radio itself. So real simple, just to recap, you're gonna add three functions to your mixer. You want a, poten a potentiometer, so you can modify your gain, you want channel 10 to be a three position switch so you can set your modes to be off stabilize or wind rejection and auto level and then channel 12 so you can perform a calibration while the plane is on the ground and by the way i say s6r because that's all i really use i haven't had a need at this point for an eight channel stabilized receiver uh, but all these steps apply for both it doesn't matter s6r s8r it's all the same so we're going to press the system button and you'll see that there's an option right on the tools page for FR Sky S6R. And by the way, if you're wondering about these scripts, all you have to do is download the SD card content for your current version of OpenTX, and this directory structure with the tools will be set up for you. FR Sky S6R, I'm going to click on that. And one of the ways you can tell right away if you've had success is if you start reading variables on this side. Okay, I do not have a VTAIL, so I'm gonna change that by pressing the jog dial. And once that's blinking, I can change to a delta wing or normal. And for my example, the Buffalo, that's a normal wing configuration, which means separate ailerons, elevator, and rudder. And then for mounting type, you can look at the picture and what they're showing you is that the output pins go to the rear and the antenna wires go, to the, go forward. It doesn't have to be that way. You can, you can mount it the other way with the servo leads forward if you want, but you have to go in and reverse things if you do that. But for, if, you're, if you're watching this video, it's probably safer to stick with what they show you. So we'll leave the mounting type as horizontal, but here are the other options. You can do horizontal reversed, which is upside down on its, with the markings not showing. You can do vertical, which is on a side. You can do vertical reverse, which is on the other side or back to horizontal. So a lot of different mounting options. Basically, it lets you mount it however you need to. Now, the next thing is here, this is the tricky part. Pay attention up here on the top right. You see that one of two, that's what page we're on. So in order to get to the rest of the configuration for the S6R, you hit the page right button, and that will read the configuration that exists on the radio as of now. Okay. SXR functions. If you don't want this to be a stabilizer at all, you just want to use it as a receiver, you can turn that off. So if you were, say, in a flying competition and you didn't want to be accused of cheating, you could turn that off and that'll disable all stabilization. I mentioned in the start of the video that I will be focused on quick mode only. So quick mode is the one that limits you to the three options. It's off, stabilized, or auto level. If you're out of quick mode, you can also have hover and knife edge mode, which I've never used, so I have no experience, so I have no business telling you anything about it. So we'll stick with quick mode. 
if you remember when I did the smooth, I have two elevator servos. So in my radio configuration for the S6R, in one of the two channels, I think it's channel six, I put the channel six mode to be elevator two. If you don't have a second, and what basically what that means is that this, this channel on the receiver will respond to your elevator outputs on your radio. And likewise in channel five, if you put it on aileron two, that means your second aileron channel, which is number five, will respond to aileron movements on the stick. All right, if you don't want it to do that, or say you want to use it for something else like gear or flaps, you can put it in aux one and aux two, and then in your mixer, you can assign channel five and six to whatever you want. You can assign them to sliders or you know, switches. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want with it. Okay, aileron direction, normal and reverse. Those are the only two options we have. And let's give you an example of what happens here. Now, before we touch that, I want to make one point very clear. Before you get into this configuration on the radio, you need to make sure that your control surfaces operate the way you think they're supposed to operate first. So you do that first, and let me show you. Let me just get out of here real quick, and I'm going to show you. You go into your outputs, and you, let's connect the aileron. I'm just going to show you. Let's not leave this to guesswork. Okay, so you can see when I move my stick to the right, the servo arm goes up. It's traveling up my finger. Now, if I want to switch that, I can click Enter on this output channel and reverse it. So I'll just highlight this little arrow, and I'm going to reverse it. Now, when I move the stick to the right, notice how the arm goes down. You need to do that for all of your control surfaces before you go in and configure the S6R. Okay? If you don't, you're going you're to create some problems for yourself. So trust me on that one. Configure your servo directions first, and then we'll go into the S6R and finish off in there. So back to our Lua script. What this does is we have our radio set up to work correctly without any stabilization help at all. Now, if I turn the, I'm going to turn the stabilizer on so you can see what happens when we reverse the direction. So I've got the receiver in my hand, and I'm going to change the orientation of the receiver on the longitudinal axis. So you see when I rotate it counterclockwise, the arm goes up. If that's not correct in stabilization mode, this is where you change it. You go into aileron direction, highlight that field, and inverse it. Now, once I've done that, when I roll left, you see how now the servo arm goes down? That's how you get your stabilizer set up correctly to make the appropriate corrections on the plane in flight. And you can do the same thing with your elevator and your rudder, and aileron two and elevator two. Okay, now that we've covered output direction for the servo, let's get into the gains. There's a lot of different discussion out there, and I know that I've read a lot of different descriptions about what these gains do, but I'm going to just show you what I see, and that's it. Okay, for the stabilizer gain, you'll notice there are two options in here. One is called stab gain, and the other is called auto level gain. The other thing I'll point out is that in stab gain, you've got aileron, elevator, rudder, and in auto level gain, you only have aileron and elevator, which means no rudder in auto level mode. Not sure why, maybe they don't want the plane turning, I really don't know, but no rudder output on auto level mode. So these two modes can conform to the wind rejection mode, which in my case is the middle position, and the auto level mode, which keeps the plane flat, and that is in the up position. Okay, we'll cover the stabilizer gains first, and the bottom line here is that this number basically determines how far this arm moves during wind rejection mode. So right now, I've got my potentiometer set at the 50%, it's at that detent, and I've got my aileron stabilizer gain set at 50, and I'm gonna move my receiver about the longitudinal axis. Okay, so there we go. That's the movement I get when I'm at 50-50. So 50 on the pot and 50 on the gain. Now, I'm gonna move my stabilizer gain all the way up to 100. And we'll do the same test. Now we'll move it down to zero and do the same test. And you'll see that this number influences how far that arm moves. So it's exaggerated, I get that, but you, I just want to prove the point. So same test, and you can see that arm is barely moving. And we'll go back up to 50, 
which is probably a pretty good starting point for most planes because you can always use your master gain to adjust it in flight. Okay, so the gain just influences how far that arm moves during stabilization mode. Now on auto level, I'm, there's one thing that I learned about this receiver, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove it to you guys by setting some exaggerated circumstances. So I'm gonna set my aileron gain on wind rejection mode all the way up to 100. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want you to see the exaggerated movement of that arm in stabilized mode. Okay, you see how far that thing is moving? Okay, now I'm going to go into auto level on the aileron and I'm going to set it down to something low like 10. And I'm going to flip into auto level mode. So there we go, we're in auto level mode. Now watch this. There's no way that that movement should go that far with a gain of 10. And what's happening, and you can notice the servo movement, is the radio is operating both wind rejection and auto level simultaneously. So as that servo goes up on its side, I get that wind rejection movement and then it reverts to the auto level value of 10. That's why it's moving that far. Now, here's how I'm going to prove the point. I'm going to go into the stabilizer gain and turn that back down to zero all the way down to zero okay so now I've turned off the stabilizer gain for the aileron altogether and I've left my auto level at 10 now watch you see how I no longer have that aggressive wind rejection movement and the servo arm is staying put what that tells me is that when this receiver is in auto level mode it's also doing wind rejection as well I'll go back up and I'm going to set this back up to 100 just to prove the point. Okay, now I've got it way up at 100. It's exaggerated to show you. And I've, nothing else has changed on the radio. Now watch this movement. Watch that arm. It'll go way up and then come back down to the 10 position for the auto level. You see that? I've been flying these receivers quite a bit and I've got them in a lot of my airplanes and I didn't know that until today. In fact, I've never even seen mention of it, but I'm convinced 100% that when I'm in auto level mode that I still have wind rejection and I still have auto leveling. Uh, I didn't know that. So that may be news to you, it's definitely news to me. Okay, so that's it for auto level gain. One other thing that I want to point out, I'm going to set this, I'm going to set the aileron stabilizer back down to zero because I don't want that interfering with anything. I'm going to turn that all the way down to zero. Now I'm going to roll. You see I got my little movement of 10. Let me add just a little bit so you, so you can see. Let me make sure you can see it well. I'm going to make it 30. There we go. Okay, so now you can clearly see I've got movement. This is auto level movement. So when I'm up on the side, it stays there until I come back down to neutral. Okay. Now watch this. It, that's with the pot set at 50%. I'm going to turn it all the way up to 100 and I'm going to do the same thing. Now I'm going to turn the pot all the way down to zero and do the same thing. So while they say channel 9 is a master gain, it does not appear to have any influence on the auto level function at all. Yeah, I can't see any difference in that movement. That's, that's with the pot at zero. It certainly doesn't kill it like it does in wind rejection mode. And here's all the way up to 100. No difference. Uh, to me, that looks identical. I don't see any difference in the gain. Now, the one thing I will say, and I don't see it in the Lua script that you do see in the software, is that there's also an angle gain on auto level. And I don't see that in Lua. That gain may influence the degree setting for the angle for a given control surface. So if you set the angle gain to be 20 degrees only, meaning that plane can only rotate 20 degrees on the longitudinal axis, that may be what that gain's for. But I can tell you that in auto level mode, I'm not seeing any influence of this master gain on the receiver at all. Everything is the same whether it's at 100 or zero. That's zero. I got the same movement and the same speed. I don't see anything different. Okay, if you can't get the receiver mounted flat, one thing you can do is go into the elevator offset and set it to a position that does return that servo arm to neutral. It only allows a negative 20 degree adjustment, and in this case, that's not enough. So in that scenario, you might have to just find a better way. Another reason that that would be useful is that when you do your auto calibration, your, your toggling through 
channel 12 rapidly three times, if you just can't seem to get it perfectly level, that's, think of it like a trim. Think of it like an elevator trim. That's probably the best way to think about it. So if it's not quite flying the way you want it to when you're in auto mode, then you can use this offset to tweak it a little bit and say, well, I want it to fly a little more up or a little more down, nose up or nose down. And that's what that's for. All right, that covers everything that I wanted to cover in Lua. So now we have to do a calibration. Let's, let's set up and do a calibration. Now there are two real important points in the calibration. Number one, I highly recommend you take the prop off the plane. Number two, if you're not gonna do that, make sure you use a throttle cut because one of the steps in calibration, and this is a critically important step, uh, when I got my first S6Rs and I went through a calibration, I thought they were broken. I thought I broke the rudders. I see posts on this in the forums all the time. After you complete the self-check, you have to move your sticks through the range of motion on high rates. Don't do it on low rates. Do it on high rates. The reason is because if you do it on low rates, the receiver will think that's as far, that's the full range of motion for your sticks. So super important to make sure that you put your your rate switch on high if you're using dual rates make sure it's on high and make sure that props off or minimally make sure it's locked because you don't want to be bumping the throttle accidentally while you're trying to set a calibration okay in order to perform a calibration what we need to do is take our switch that we assigned to channel 12 and this is super important too it has to be moved rapidly through position zero three times that's critical. You can't put this on a two position switch because going from high to low doesn't move through zero. It has to move through zero. So make sure you put it on a three position switch and move it through that three position switch rapidly. I think it's within five seconds. I want to say maybe seven, but you'll find, you'll see as soon as I do it three times, you'll see the receiver go into LED will turn blue and then everything will kind of pause for a minute. The servo will do a dance. When, when the servo dance is done, that's when we move our sticks to the full range of motion. Okay. So here we go. Make sure your receiver is in the plane and the plane is flat. You want the plane to be as flat as you can make it the way it's supposed to look in the sky. You don't want it way nose up or way nose down because if, when you do, that's what the receiver is going to think is straight and level. So you want to arrange your plane so that it looks like it's flying straight and level. So if you have a tail dragger, don't just let it sit on the tail while you do this. You've got to lift that tail up. Okay, here we go. We're going to toggle three times and we should see a blue light and then a servo dance and then we'll do the stick calibration. So one, two, three, there's the blue light. So I went through zero three times. It's calibrating for level. There's the servo dance. Now move the sticks, full rudder, full aileron and full elevator. Okay. Now that that's complete, it'll exit that self check mode and you can see I've got full range of motion on that elevator and guys I'm telling you right now I've done this before where I didn't do the stick movement and when I was done my rudder didn't work at all all right guys I'm gonna give you a pro tip because you stuck around and watched the video all the way to the end I'm gonna show you one last little pro tip channel 12 in addition to being the calibration option is also a chicken switch which means it'll stay in auto level mode so you can see that Right now, I'm going to put my stabilizer, I'm going to turn it off, it's off, but watch this. You see how I'm still moving? It's because channel 12 is still down. When I flip that back to up position, now my stabilizer is off. If I put it in the middle position, I get my wind rejection, and if I put it all the way up, I get the full auto level. So here's the thing. You can use auto level with the mode switch all the way up. Or if that's down and you have a panic, you can flip your channel 12 down as well, and that will activate auto level. I really don't know why they do that. It's very confusing, but that's what's going on. And I've seen guys say, I've done it myself. <laughs> I've done it myself, where I've done a calibration, and then when I'm done, I pick up the airplane and all my surfaces are still moving. That's why. Turn channel 12 back off. See, there's another reason you don't want that switch to be active while you're flying. Um, just not, not a good thing. All right, that's all I've got on setting up the S6R and S8R with the RadioMaster TX16S. I hope you found that content valuable, and if you're a regular viewer but not a subscriber, please consider joining the channel. It really helps small channels continue to be able to put videos up on YouTube. So if you like this kind of content, it's important that you subscribe. And for those of you who've been around for a while, I appreciate you. Keep the comments coming. Don't forget to hit up the Amazon affiliate links and my t-shirt store if you get a chance. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.
All right, before we get started, no, don't say that again. Number three, we have to configure the stabilization. Number.